All right, so today I'm gonna to make it so that you can talk to NPCs using the chat box. It's just a simple conversation just to get up and running, but you could build on this, right? So you have to use their name, you have to say like, hi, slaw dog, what's new, bruh? And he's gonna answer back in the chat box. Get lost, SimTech Gamer 7. Aw, oh, man, bummer. So I thought that'd be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get started. I have a fresh world right here. Let's go ahead and get started by sending messages to our chat box up here. So I'm gonna go over to my Explorer, down to Starter Player, open that up, Starter Player Scripts, hit the plus, and then I'll do an LO for local, local script. That's what we want, local script. And I'm gonna call this chat stuff. There we go, get rid of that print statement, we don't need that. And we do need replicated storage because I'm gonna put a remote event in there so the server can send stuff to the local script so that we can go to the chat box. So we'll do game, get service, replicated storage. Let's go to replicated storage right now, hit that plus sign, add a remote event. There we go, that's our doorway from the client to the server. So let's call that chat re. Right? And now let's get a reference to chat re in our code. So local chat re, it's in replicated storage. We're gonna wait for child chat re. We are going to need the starter GUI or starter GUI, like I like to call it. We'll just call this starter GUI. And that's also a service, game get service, starter GUI. Cool, and then we need a font size and we need a font and a font size for our chat uh, for when we send a message. So I'm gonna do a variable for chat font. So this is gonna be the type. It's gonna be in the enum font dot source sans bold. That's perfect. And we're gonna get our chat, we're gonna get the chat text size. I'll just call it chat size. Right? You guys know what that means, right? And we'll make it 18. And now we need a function, a local function, send chat message. We're gonna have the MSG, that's gonna be short for message. That's gonna be the string that's going to the chat box. And I'm gonna send a color. That way we can have different things sending different colors so we can identify it by color, as long as you're not colorblind. And if you are, that's fine, you can just read it. So we'll say, Color, chat color, let's, let's call it chat color. Cool. Now I'm gonna wrap this into a P call. We're gonna send something to the set core uh, with a, via the starter GUI. So we're gonna do a protected call. So I'm gonna do a repeat statement. I'm gonna repeat it until the call is successful. Right, a little bit overkill, but you don't wanna miss any messages. So we'll say, just do this little wait in here in case it does mess up and you have to do a few repeats. You don't want to crash anything. And we'll do this local success. That's going to be a Boolean flag that catches the result of my P call that has an embedded function inside it. And that function is going to send a message to the starter GUI using the set core method, right? I'm going to do chat make system message, right? Make sure you spell that right. Let's check it. Chat, make, system, message. Cool. And then you gotta send some info with it, right? And it's gonna be inside of this uh, curly brackets. It's gonna be in a table. So I did that curly brackets there, not parentheses, curly brackets. Let me get rid of that. And we're gonna send some values in this table. So we're gonna have the text. And the text is the actual message, right? I'm gonna comma delimit it. There's a comma at the end of message, right? And then we're gonna do color, that's the text color. And we're, we pass that in, right? We call that chat color, comma. And then we're gonna do font, chat font. Let me get rid of that for a second. Cool, and then we're gonna do the text size. Text size equals chat size, we call it, right? There we go. So you need commas after this, the message, the color, the font, but not at the end because it's the last element in the table. So we're sending two here. 
we're sending this table and it's going to have all the information that we need to post a chat. Now, we need some way of calling this meth message when a chat comes in. I'm going to use that chat RE. I always do that with the with the R. Chat RE on client event connect send chat message. There we go. So, when we get a client event, oh, you know what I forgot here? We got to repeat until we get a success. Voila. That's why that was red. If you see little red lines, there's an error. So you got to check on that. Now that we got our chat function set up, let's go ahead and open the place, add a rig, and then we can talk to it. So go to plugins, build rig, and you could use any of these. I'm going to use the R15 man rig. There we go. And you got to give it a unique name, right? Dummy is unique, but if you add more, right? So slaw dog, there we go. And we got to add body colors, so don't get in trouble. Body colors. Cool. And then let's add a script. So hit slaw dog again, get a regular script, right? So this is going to be a server side script. We're going to talk to the client side with it. So we will call this something that makes sense, like chat AI. Right? It's not going to be a true AI, but it is going to make one or two decisions. Like if it's, if we're talking to it, right? So we need a reference to our char script dot parent. And then we need the name from the char. So we know if we're being addressed, we need replicated storage for our remote event game, get service replicated storage. And let's go ahead and get our chat RE from replicated storage chat re so we can get stuff from the client and then we can send stuff to the client we'll do a function oh you know what i'm going to do i'm going to use this game service this game player service player added and just add this to players as they come in so you have the ability to talk to this guy when you enter the game i'm going to say connect function so player will get passed in because we are connecting to the player added event and now i'm going to show you a really cool event that you're going to need to know even if you don't do it like this this is really handy player chatted so you can capture anything in the chat from players by this player chatted event this is probably the most important thing in this video all right so then we're going to get a function from that and guess what comes in the message Whatever they typed in that chat window is going to come through. And what we'll do is we'll get this Boolean value. I'll call it match, right? We're going to use the string match method to search the method, to search the message for the name, right? So this is going to be my, this is going to be my pattern that I'm looking for in here. So if you write his name, you're going to find it in here. It is case sensitive though. All right, so now we'll say if match, then, oh, they're talking to us. I'm going to wait two seconds, and then I am going to do a chat RE, and I'm going to fire to all clients so everybody can see it in their window. Whoops, I did find first child. I want fire all clients right there. You can do fire client if you only want the person you're addressing to, to see it in the chat box. But I'm going to do fire all clients and then we'll do a wait or what. Oh, uh, we got to we got to do these brackets so that we know who's talking in the chat box. I know this is going to be kind of tricky dot dot name. and I'll explain it there in a second. So what we're going to do is we're doing a bracket. And then we are appending, so this is an appending uh, operator, the name, and then we're appending the close bracket, and then we're putting these spe uh, col this colon here, so it looks like the name in the chat box, right? Because it doesn't automatically put the NPC name in there. Then what we'll do is we will append more of our message. Let's say something like, what do you want? And then we'll give his name too. So we need another appending operator, player dot name, another appending operator, and then the question mark, right? Let's put this on a separate line so we can see it. There we go. 
Cool. Now this is all one string. You could just send all one string. You don't have to do all this fancy appending, but here you could use variables in here. And I thought that would be pretty cool. All right. Now let's see what we got. We have to, what do we have to do yet? Um, we have to send a color. Now, if we send it like this, it's going to default to white. But remember over here in our chat stuff, we had a color that would be unique to each player. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go and say local color and we'll get the color three from RGB and you see the little palette here. This is what color the chat message is going to be from our character. Yeah, let's make it easy to see like pink. All right, there we go. And it gives you the pink RGB and you can even see the little color there. Now just pass that as the second argument in your fire all clients. We'll do color. Now you can change your color. Cool. Let's try it out. Here we go. And there's slaw dog. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to say, Hey, slaw dog. What is he going to say? There it is. See, we have our little brackets in there. Slaw dog. What do you want? Simtech gamer seven question mark. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but you always get the same response back. You'll have to be a little more clever, clever with your AI. So it'd be something like, um, where's your house? Slaw dog. Where's your house? You have to use the name, right? Slaw dog, comma. Where is your house? And he's going to say the same thing back, right? What do you want, Simtech Gamer 7? But you can build on this, right? That's pretty cool. I will see you in the next video. Good luck with this one.